I am Gerard Leary from Winthrop. I teach at the University of Mass Boston and also at the Winthrop Public Library. Unfortunately, both institutions are closed right now, so I wanted to um, just teach here at uh, WCAT in Winthrop. And um, because it's fall, we're going to do a lot of foliage items. Um, today we're going to start with a maple leaf, but I'm going to talk to you first of all about products that we need to get. We need to get a set of colored pencils. Um, we're only going to use four, four pencils today. Pink, a couple of pink erasers, pencil sharpener, and um, a sketchbook with about 40 sheets in it. You can probably buy these at any retailer in the area. I'm not going to mention anyone. But um, um, Crayola makes colored pencils, and you can buy a set for about, um, mm, I'm not sure about the price, but there's 24 in a set, and the paper would be also at any of the retailers. So I'm going to leave my email address. If anyone has any questions, they can email me. It's Gerard, lowercase letters, G-E-R-A-R-D, 16, number 16. Golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, drive, D-R-I-V-E, at gmail.com. Okay, we're all set to go. By the way, I just wanted to show you, I don't know if you can see that very well. These are just leaves that I snapped off a branch today. Um, and a lot of leaves on the ground, so why don't you go out and just pick up a leaf and I'll show you how to do the outline, even if you don't have your pencils, because hopefully we'll rebroadcast a few times during the week. Okay, I guess we're all set to go. So what I did was I taped this green leaf on a piece of paper and I'm going to outline it in regular HB pencil, a number two pencil. It's going to take a little bit. I'm doing it very lightly with a, I have a mechanical pencil, but you can use an HB pencil or a number two pencil. It's really good to tape underneath it so the leaf doesn't move as you're drawing. Very light. If you can't get this right away, don't worry about it because hopefully we'll, we'll show it a few times in the course of a week or two. Let's see if I can get this thing off. Oh, forgot this. Could have been a disaster, but I think it's going to be okay. I just double sided tape. Okay, so when you look at a maple leaf, it has a stem. And then it has um, veins. And I'll draw this really lightly. Hopefully you can see it. The veins go up to each of the tips. And you, then you can have veins coming right off the stem. I hope this is showing up okay because it's, it's pretty light. Okay, so that's the basic outline. We have the stem with the veins in the tips, and that equals a maple leaf. 
Now we're only going to use four or five colors. So I'm going to start off with the yellow. And I have a pencil sharpener. Mine is electric, but you can have just a regular pencil sharpener like this pencil sharpener here. Okay, I'm going to start with just doing one side, very light circular motion, le very light pressure as you're going along. We're going to do just one side of the leaf, and then we'll go and do the other side. Nice and light. What you want to do is you want to fill in all the white so there's only yellow showing. And we're going to do a couple of layers so the layers will uh, help fill in. But nice light pressure as we're going along. Colored pencil drawing is you have to have a lot of patience to do this. This is not like watercolor or oil painting. To saturate the page, you, you just need to take your time and go over it nice and light. And if you, um, if you feel you spent too much time on it, walk away from it for a few hours or even the next day and come back and do it. That's what a lot of colored pencil artists do. So as you can see, we're just doing one side. You don't have to hold the pencil like this necessarily. You can hold it back here. Nice and easy, low pressure, you're filling in everything. So you really only need yellow, orange, green, and red, and brown for this. The whole idea of doing this maple leaf is there, there are so many brilliant colors and foliage that, you know, a maple leaf is green in the summer. And that's the chlorophyll, and that's what feeds the leaf. But as the sun becomes shorter, the day, the maple leaf turns colors. It loses its chlorophyll. And these colors underneath are usually orange, red, and yellow. And they appear, and then the leaf falls off the tree, and it turns brown. But when it's beautiful, it's really beautiful, only for a short period of time. So we've got that one side pretty full. Again, very light pressure. Take your time. There's not much to it. Try to do that circular motion because that gets rid of what are called hard lines. We don't have to, want, we don't want anything looking linear. Okay, so that's one side with the yellow. Now the second layer, we're going to lay on some orange. Again, we start at the top, sharp pencil, use your regular sharpening, sharpener. I sharpen pretty regularly, it just gives more detail. And I rotate the pencil when I draw. So the pencil wears on all sides. And you don't have to sharpen the pencil as much. Just rotate it around every now and then. We're doing circular motions, so we're going over the yellow. This is called layering, when you lay one color down on another color. It's called layering. And then once we get that done, we'll get into blending. These colored pencils have pigment in them. And some of the colored pencils are wax-based. And the more expensive ones are oil-based. We'll be using wax base. And I think um, I, I mentioned to you before, if you go to one of the local retailers, they should have very, very um, good pricing. Not expensive, really, to start off with. It can be expensive as you progress, but Crayola is really the good name. You all use Crayola crayons when you're in school, 
Well, Crayola has colored pencils too, and um, I'm using some of them right now. They're very, very good, even compared to the really expensive ones. So I would uh, recommend going to the local retailer. Or the other thing you can do is you can go on to Amazon and just, uh, well, you can look at Amazon, but you can go on to Google and just type in colored pencil material, and they should come up with all kind of different products and um, pricing and names where you can buy them. I can't really do any commercials here. So that's what I would recommend you do. Okay, so we have two layers down and I have a blender, I'll just show you what it is. This is called a contillon or a blender. It's cardboard wrapped up and on the tip, you just run the tip. I already have orange on this, so I'll just do this. And what it does is blend the colors together. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera, but you can use paper towels, paper tissue, Q-tips are good. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You've got Q-tips at the house, they, whirly, they work well as a blender. So I'm gonna go with white pencils because white pencils are absent of pigment, it's just white. So it's not gonna show up any other color. And with circular motion, with little pressure, we're just gonna start to blend these two colors, the yellow and the orange. But I would recommend trying this with Q-tips. Or paper towels. Nice and easy, again, it takes a lot of patience to do this. Some people want immediate results, but it doesn't work that way. And you're gonna get better at this too. If you just take your time, just practice. I also should mention you could go on to uh, YouTube and there are all kind of tutorials for colored pencil, which are free. And you could type in color pencil drawing over maple leaf and you'd have four or five tutorials. So um, it's not just my style. There are other styles that are out there too. But I watch them and I learn from them too. I don't know if it's picking up, but the colors are blending pretty well. I just want to inspect to see. They're coming in as good as I want them. I really want to have all the white paper underneath covered up with these two colors. We're going to erase the outside pencil um, as I finish this one side. So you've got your two colors down, your yellow and orange. Now we're going to add a little bit of red, but we're not going to fill the red all the way through. We're just going to put a little red in certain areas. See how I'm holding the pencil right now? Just kind of almost at the tip of it. Nice and easy. You see where the two veins meet? We're just going to put a little bit of red there, very, very light, because we're going to blend it in. We'll put a little bit more up here, nice and easy. Right about there. Kind of like at the intersections of the veins themselves. And if you do it light pressure, It'll be really subtle. In other words, the colors will blend well together so it doesn't look like there's a big difference between where one color is and where the other one begins. What I also like to do is take my pencil, maybe make a little tip with the color. It just makes the, uh, the color pop a little bit or show up a little bit. I hope that's showing up. 
on the camera. We can blend in those colors as we go along too. So now you're seeing how the base of the colors are working. We got one side done. It only took about 15 minutes. I'm going to go back to white pencil, sharpening up a bit. What we're going to try to do is blend these from the tips in nice and easy. You'll see how they blend. Now we'll try where the red is, and we just want to move that around a little bit. That's too dark, I can neutralize it, which I will in a minute. We want to get all this red. This is the third layer. And if it's too dark, I can go over it with a little yellow or a little orange. You see that okay? This is where the reds are. We're going to blend them in. And if I don't think they're too, if they're too bright in one spot, we can neutralize them with a yellow. So that's what that looks like. Let me do a little bit more detail on that. So we're going to add a little yellow up here, just a little bit. little yellow here. A little pressure, but not a lot. That red can, can stay pretty um, separate, but I'm going to add a little red and orange to it just to blend it out a little bit. kind of mutes the color or softens it, the harshness of the red. So now it's, uh, it's look like the red and orange are blending a little bit. This is kind of classic colors for leaves, although when you look at leaves, none of them are the same. Their color is all very, very different. So let me go over the tips again with the white pencil. I know sometimes when people start doing colored pencil drawing, they have problems with the um, pencil sharpener. It, it breaks the pencils. There's uh, ways to do that if you rotate the pencil sharpener, not the pencil, you're going to have a lot more success. But it's a matter of trial and error, just you have to figure it out. The less expensive pencils seem to break a little bit more. I'm just going to go over this a little bit more with blending. I like to do just one side at a time. So these colors are, are pretty subtle. They're, they're blending well together. And then I'm going to take my pink eraser and I'm going to try to very, very carefully with the edge of the eraser, if you can see that edge right there, I'm just going to try to delicately remove the graphite or the pencil line, the number two pencil that I, I drew before. We can fill this in as we go along, but I'm 
Drawing like this from a subject is called realism. A lot of people like to draw from their heads but because they think they know what a leaf looks like. And they, they have a vision in their head what a leaf looks like. But I think, and a lot of other artists think, it's a lot better to have a subject to draw because there's a lot of things we miss when we draw from our mind. And a lot of things we get when we actually able to see something and draw. It's going to look a little bit different when these lines are removed. A little bit more natural. Now I can go back in and use my white pencil to kind of fill in the gaps where we took away the graphite or the number two pencil. Remember, if you have any questions, you can just email me and I'll get back to you. And we'll have the schedule um, posted shortly. Remember, you can use any color. You don't have to use red. You can use um, green. You can use orange, yellow, any of those colors. These are the classic colors for foliage, for maple leaves. That's why I'm using them. But, you know, they're, I don't know if you can see these. These are colors. Uh, I just broke this branch off oh, maybe less than an hour ago. So I don't know if it's showing up. But there's a lot of color here. There's yellows and greens. I don't see a lot of yellow there. But some of them are very, very muted and some of them a little bit more vibrant. And it's just how it is. That's one branch. If you do that, put it in water because the leaves will start to shrivel without any uh, water or, or nutrients. Now I'm going to show you something very cool. At the tip of the stem, where the stem comes in the leaf, that's where you'll see the kind of the last part of the chlorophyll, the summer color. It kind of shrivels down because that's the last part of the tip. And it's kind of a cool effect to put a little little green in there because it's a nice contrast nice and easy <coughs> now let me take a white pencil and we'll blend that white pencil in with the other colors it's just real subtle and you, you'll start to see that when you start to take a look at leaves I'd really recommend you, you go out and pick some leaves off the lawn or the sidewalk. Take them home and just study them. Study the vein system. Study the subtlety and the colors. And bring one home and then just tape it to your paper. Tape it with a two-sided tape. That just means you're turning over the tape. And then do the outline and then you're all set. And again, if you have any questions, you can get me on my email. Okay, and then the last part of this side is I'm going to put in some brown. That's not what I want. Oh, good. So this is a Crayola crayon. So we're going to put in very easy the stem. Nice and easy. We're not going to erase the stem lines because we can just go right over them. 
At the bottom of the stem, it kind of curves like that. In some spots, we can make it darker and then lighter. And you can also put a little green in there, right down at the tip. And as we go along, so that's about one half of what it looks like. Good colors, good color contrast, using all three colors. This could blend a little bit more. I might put a little bit more yellow up here, just a little bit more. Kind of spreads the color out a little bit. But it's getting that really, really beautiful autumn effect. My thinking is if you're going to draw foliage with these beautiful colors, you might as well make them as vibrant as possible. This is not vibrant. It's pretty, but it's not vibrant. Put a yellow in there. Okay, that's the first half. Now, we're going to try doing the second half. My problem is I move the colors around. So anyway, let me show you. This is, this is kind of the end result of a, a drawing I did in the middle of September. So it's pretty vibrant. I used, the, uh, I used about four or five layers of orange, yellow, and red, and I did the outline of a, a leaf, drew the outline of the leaf. So that, that took about an hour. But it's different, you know, it's a different color. Put on my glasses and we'll start again. On the other side, we're going to use yellow. And again, we'll start from the top. Nice, easy. You know what? I don't even think this is the same yellow. <laughs> but that's okay. Nothing's perfect in nature and in me. So again, circular motions, light pressure. I mean, you can do a lot of different uh, levels or layers, I should say, if you want. But in the interest of time, we're going on about a half hour. We're going to do about an hour. Nice and easy. This is where the patients come in because a lot of people run out of patience. They have to realize that people at UMass are the same way. They, oh, it takes too long. Well, paintings take a long time. Some, some of the artists that I see on YouTube, they, they tell me, oh, that took me three hours. But they have it on time-lapse photography, so they're able to get it in on a tutorial in 30 minutes or so. It just takes time. You don't have to do this in one sitting. I think if you draw about three hours a week, if you can find that time, I know, I know a lot of people are out of work and I know a lot of um, kids are learning from remotely. So I don't know if you have too much time, but Three hours a week is not a lot. Are you starting to see the colors blend nicely? It's really subtle because the colors will move to each other. I might do a, a different color on these tips too, I'm not really sure. So nice and circular motion, very light pressure. And I just like electro pencil sharpeners because they um, really give you a, a nice tip 
and they don't break the pencils hardly at all. But I draw a lot. As long as you get the basics down, if you can do this maybe two or three times over the next couple of weeks, and the, the most important thing that you need to do, in my opinion, is once you finish something, sign it and date it and put it on your refrigerator. That's what I tell all my students at UMass. And they say, well, why would we want to do that? I said, when you were a kid, didn't your parents do that? Didn't, didn't you put your stuff on the refrigerator? Yeah, yeah, I did. Well, there's no difference whether you are five or 95. What will happen is people will go by, people in your family, your relatives, people visiting the house. And if they're in the kitchen, they'll go, who's the artist? And you'll say very modestly, why I am. And then you may influence someone else to become an artist. People love art. But a lot of people think, oh, I can't draw. Actually, you can. You just don't know you can. It doesn't take a lot of skill. I mean, to be Museum of Fine Art artist takes a lot of skill. But to do something like this with the right techniques and the right pencils, the right paper, and the right erases, and just learning the simple technique, you'll get good. But it's patience and practice. And never get discouraged because the more you draw, the more you're going to like it. You just have to get over that beginning period that, oh, I'm not good at this. Well, you have to give yourself some time. Is this, it looks even, I think, yeah. Sometimes I draw things unevenly and I don't realize it until I'm finished and I'll go, well, nature's not exactly perfect. I think the, the camera would pick up this, that most of that side of the leaf that I'm drawing right now um, is filled with yellow pigment. Okay, now we're going to take the orange. Let's see if I have the right orange. Okay, from the top, remember roti rotating the tip, it'll just make the pencil wear more evenly. Just move it around. It's kind of difficult to get used to because no one's ever told you that before. The way we draw uh, write is we hold our pencil really tight and we write that way. But drawing is a whole different animal. Nice and easy, circular motions, light pressure, sharp pencil. You get more detail when the pencil is sharp. Sometimes it takes a while to fill it in. But you can see this is going from nothing to something. And I'm going to try to make this side as similar as the other side. What a challenge. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to have one color saturate the other color or completely fill over the other color. It takes a little bit of time. A 
if you have the pencil on its side, you're going to cover more area rather than going like that. And you're going to get used to holding the pencils different ways, too. That was another challenge for my students and for me when I first started, is I wasn't used to holding a pencil on its side or at the end of it. But eventually you become used to it and you're able to control the pencil pretty well. I usually like to listen to music in my class. You can listen to anything you want, but it, it kind of helps you out, I think. I know I, I listened to some classical music by Vivaldi. And uh, I, I like all types of music, but when I play the Vivaldi in the classroom, people have never heard it before. And after a couple of weeks, they say, oh, did you know Vivaldi did this? Or, so it's funny how people uh, just pick up on something that's new. This is coming out kind of different. That, that's okay. Not that we're going to necessarily correct it. But this is really just an exercise in understanding how the pencils work. And then we're going to take the white pencil again. So we have two layers down. We have the yellow and the orange. We're going to take the white pencil and go over it again. I have short-term memory loss, so I don't know if I've already done this before. <laughs> I hope I haven't. So again, the white pencil has no pigment. And it will blend these two colors without showing any white which is really cool. But I told you, you can use, this is called a blender or a cotillon. You can buy these online too. It's just rolled up cardboard. But the tips, when they're dirty, you can just erase the color and the color will transfer. And then they become clean again. They can use them as a blender. And they blend the colors really nicely. But if you don't have one of these, a Q-tip, a white pencil, paper towels, paper tissue, all can be used. I like to take my time. I'm retired. I like to take my time. I'm not in a hurry. Actually, I'm going to go back and use this again. Again, these are called blenders. You can buy them online or, you know, there are some art stores around. I can't mention any names, but they're around in the area. If you just tell them that you're just starting out with colored pencil, they'll give you some tips on what pencils are good and inexpensive. Okay, let me just do that white pencil once again. Where did I leave it? But that blend is good. You, you really should try Q-tips because they're inexpensive. You can use them a lot. And um, they work nicely. They really do. We won't get ahead of ourselves, but you can use baby oil and Q-tips 
to make the pigment look more liquid. But we're not going to do that right now. We'll do it later on. See, this color is a little bit different, which I'll adjust the color on the other side. going on about 40 minutes, 40 minutes, yeah. I mean, you could spend a couple of hours doing this, getting a lot more detail, but in an hour, we'll get a lot of work done. So you get the basic idea. This is really not perfect, but it's pretty good. Now we're going to take the red again. My problem is I forget where I put these pencils. And that's a bad thing because you should have all your pencils. You should be working with the same pencils all the time. Let's see what happens here. Okay, this is sharp. We're just going to lay down a little bit. Very light, and we'll blend it. I like to put the reds right in the center of the main vein but you can put it anywhere you want. I'm gonna start with the tips here, very lightly. Let's just add an accent to the collar itself. I think I just did a little bit too, too much color the first time. Again, if, if you need any help with this, just email me at Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, 1616, Golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, Drive, D-R-I-V-E, at Gmail. Should be able to answer your questions. This is a little bit less pressure. I think they came out a little bit better, but everything looks okay. Now I'm just going to finish the uh, green. I like to have the green kind of radiate, like the sun radiate. It's really subtle. When you look at a leaf, you'll see just a little bit of green left. And that's where the last part of the chlorophyll is. Now I'll take another white pencil and we'll see if we can blend that in. And you can go all around 
and darken it if you'd like. Whatever you'd like to do, but I mean, basically that's, that's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna erase this side, this side over here. Actually, there's a way to avoid that I always forget to do. You can do the outline with one of those colors, green, <laughs> yellow, yellow, orange, or red. So you don't have to erase, but I'm not that bright. Or I can't remember, one of the two. I, all right, I'll go with, I can't remember. I'm okay. We're almost finished. Like every artist, we're never really satisfied with what we're doing. I'm just going to play with a little bit of orange. I mean, this is where you can do whatever you like, whatever you feel comfortable color-wise using and how much pressure and how much blending you do. because there's no right or wrong when you're doing foliage. I'll tell you a story about a guy by the name of Leroy Neiman, and it's, I think it's N-E-I-M-A-N. -E he was an artist in the 60s and 70s, and he used all kind of unconventional colors, and the New York art critics thought, oh, this guy's a moron. He's never going to sell anything. Well, in the 76 Olympics in Montreal, he really did a lot of artwork. He used to like to draw sports figures. And he used orange and purples and colors that you wouldn't associate with regular art, especially with uh, sports figures. Well, the guy became a multimillionaire. People loved it. So the art critics were, were wrong. So I would suggest just um, Wikipedia or Google or however you get your information. Um, Leroy, L-E-R-O-Y, Neiman, N-E-I-M-A-N. It's a great story. It's a great artist. It just goes to show you there are all kinds of different ways to create art. Well, this has come out a little bit darker than the other side, but I'm going to I'm just going to try to move it around. I think this orange really makes it more vibrant. Again, this is not perfect. I could do 10 leaves and they would all look different. It would be the same leaf that I was drawing. You seem to see things differently. I think it's the colors becoming a little bit more unified. But I'm happy. My whole goal was to get it vibrant. And I think I achieved vibrancy. I think it's really bright. When you look at these colors here, which are fresh off the tree versus this. Well, this is art. So I don't think you can ever duplicate the colors in nature, but you can make something very beautiful. I'm always adding stuff. It's tough for me to say it's finished. It's pretty close to finish. I'm just going to blend this. Always make sure that I've used this for the same color. These are great because you can put a lot of pressure on them 
and they really, really blend the colors well together. The pencils are great if that's all you have. It just takes a lot longer, but these you can use a lot more pressure on. And the colors really blend well together. I think I missed something there. So that's about it. That's what it looks like. That's a colored pencil um, drawing, and that's about 50 minutes. So again, if you have any questions at all, um, just you can reach me at Gerard, G-E-R-A-R-D, 1616, Golden, G-O-L-D-E-N, Drive, D-R-I-V-E, at gmail.com. Make sure you put your name and today's date. I think it's the 8th. And tape it to your refrigerator and then maybe draw another one or at least get the form for another one. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next week. Thank you.